Okay, again, I am back with Hollywood, our 22-year-old American Quarter Horse. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just check him for symmetry overall. So I'm gonna take a look at his face, at his sternum, and then actually get in there and take a look at his teeth as well. And then I'm gonna look at his occiput and then his wings of Atlas. So I'm gonna to try to get him where you can really see. So if you take a look at Hollywood, through here, we're nice, we're nice, we're nice. And then if we come right here, it's funny because a horse does the same thing. He goes, and he actually has a, an elevated, I yes, you do. He has an elevated left side of his, his lower, or of his lower lip. And then he also has, if you take a look at it right here, you can see where it's actually further down. So if you were to actually split this up and just, quadrants these two would look good he would look good through here but then you're gonna see an elevation of the left side so I'm curious to see if we have some TMJ issues going on up top so I'm gonna take a look at his teeth the teeth look really good and he does have a little bit of a protrusion right here I think that's something that will be fixed on his next round of dental work probably it just almost looks like a front hook so I'm going to go ahead and just check a little bit for jaw dysfunction and TMJ work here. Easy, bud. He's actually stiff to his left side. So I don't know if you could see it in the video, but when I went to maneuver him here, we went okay to the right, but coming back, there's definitely some resistance and I actually heard him grind on the back of his teeth. So we're just gonna work our way up. I'm gonna work it to the TMJ for the temporal mandibular joint. I'm gonna try to get him to you. Honestly, I really couldn't feel much. <laughs> Try it again. No, I do think he's stiff through there. I'm going to go ahead and check the other side while I'm here. Does he ever throw his head or anything in the bit or the bridle? I can't remember. Not in the bridle, no. Not normally. Okay. Now, this head bobbing under halter... Mm -hmm. is something that I have noticed has been increasing and I wasn't sure if it was behavioral but I wanted to have the uh, chiropractor and the vet check that out mm -hmm. when they're out too. I'll show you too when we finish. He's not a stiff on the side. You can actually feel the joint movement there. I could not feel hardly any joint movement over here. Gonna move back to his occiput and check these wings of Atlas up here. Looks good. Because she is my best friend, I'm really genuinely trying to do a good workup, not just make my way through a homework assignment. <laughs> so this may take me a little longer than some others. Yeah, so there is a difference on his atlas and it's similar to a horse that I have at home. So his, on the right side, this wing of atlas over here, I would say is probably a quarter inch in front of his left side. So we're gonna work at Pearson, which is really ironic because I had a host feel about faces I was gonna do and I didn't even know this was gonna happen. <laughs> so, I'm gonna go ahead and check for range of motion on the neck, and then I'm gonna to move to our legs. Good boy, come on. What do you have to keep in mind that Hollywood is 22, he's in light work. I'm just letting him bring himself around, I'm not pulling on him. And then, obviously stiff to the left. 
let's see, which was our TMJ side, and our Atlas was further back on that side. Ooh, buddy. I'm not gonna push him. So obviously some dysfunction on both sides there. Just stiff. Okay. I'm gonna just feel through his sternum here. So on his sternum, to look at it, I don't know if you can see this on the video. I'm gonna square him up a little bit. Screw it, Good boy. So when you take a look at his, or when you fill up his sternum right here, and you take a look at it, it looks relatively even, but when I fill it, you have um, some hypertonicity over here versus over here. So I definitely, we clearly have some issues going on over here. I think he's been compensating over here and that's building that up. And this was the leg that originally we were talking about was showing some issues earlier. So I'm curious to see what we find out there. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and check his cervicals and then we'll move on to his legs actually. Kind of keep it in the flow. I would say about C3, we have a really a build up here. It's just not as fluid feeling as the other ones. It's a little stiffer. We're definitely gonna work on that. I'm going to do the other side to you on up here. On both sides, that vertebra is stiff. All right, we're gonna go ahead and check for range of motion and any possible dysfunctions on the front legs and check that C7 by watching for that drop in the shoulder. First, I'm just gonna check here. Pretty good through here. And no air gap, a little bit of a reaction there. E, buddy. Let's just let's set it down. E, good boy. Good mate. There we go. There you go. Actually, not bad motion there. A little bit of dysfunction on the pickup and a slight gap, but not bad. more air here. Easy, buddy. Good boy. I'm not pulling him out. So I'm going to let him come into it on his own because he is pulling against me a little bit. He's not wanting to draw. Definitely some dysfunction happening here on the shoulder. Good boy. A little bit like myself, huh? Okay, can we see back here? Let me, I'm gonna turn him sideways, I'll turn.
I'm gonna go ahead and let him set it down. He's stiff there as well. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing on this side. Good boy. Let's check our upper and lower elevator. Check our tail for any dysfunction. Now, I know this horse very well. I would not be standing here if I did not. I would be off to the side a little more. I guess I should practice what I preach, huh? But I want you to be able to see. Just in our counterclockwise. So we go clockwise. No reactions there. And then I'm going to kind of question mark it. It's fine. Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start into the palpation part of it. So I'm just gonna work him up. But the very first thing that I wanna talk about, and there were some amazing demonstration videos, and I was so thankful for those because they helped so much. But one area I think that just gets overlooked in general, I know this is not on the rubric, so I apologize, but it's the face. So as a previous hunter coach and a venting, uh, venting rider, and now a polo player, we put so much, unfortunately, <laughs> we put so much stress on the face. And I think the face is really overlooked. There's so many muscles here. So before I move on to the rest of the body, like I have previously, I'm actually going to work on his face. I'm mean, going to just palpate the face between levator muscles and depressor muscles and auricular ear muscles and orbicular eye and orbicular nostril muscles. There's just so many. And... It's just like humans. I think we carry so much tension within our jaw, this huge masseter, and the buccinator down here, I think that it's something that's really often overlooked. We put a metal bit or a, a bozel or a hackamore on their face and we don't even think about it, so. Yeah. You know, and if you don't find anything, if there's no stress issues, fine. But I think of nothing else, it's just a relaxation for a lot of horses. You may have some really head shy horses that don't want anything to do with it. But so here I'm at the, at the orbicular. And then of course our masseter right here, which we're going to look at when we go into our TMJ work in a minute. And of course, we've got our buccinator down here. Depressor muscles here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and work um, or fill around on this TMJ some more. Okay. We know that that's an area that's going to need some work. I'm going to go up to the auricular muscle as well. And their ears are constantly listening and moving and having halters put on and bridles put on. Feels good there. Start brachiocephalic tendon. You can really feel it on him. On our rectus capitis. I'm going to massage down this neutral ligament and try to get some of that complexus in there as well and see what we have and do it again see if he was just moving or if that was a reaction about three quarters of the way down the neck <coughs> no i think it's fine Through this complexus right here, 
is really tight right here, starting to drop down into that brachial cephalic. And I think all of this is tying in with here. Actually, I don't think I really at this point, I know. So we're gonna drop on down. Do you want to hold him for me? Yeah. Here? So, put a pressure point there. I have muscle, hyp muscle hypertonicity right here. And I think that's definitely a reaction coming from that. to my ethnicity out here and we come down into this serratus right here he feels really good through there nice and flat as we come up here to these trapezius the cervical part of the trapezius muscles I'm getting some reaction right there We get back up here to my sternothyroid and my amyhyoid. And then kind of work myself down that sternocephalicus. I'm going to have a spot right here. Put your hand here. It's just a video thing. Can you feel that? Yes. good so far through there I'm gonna run down to the top of cranial deep pectorals seem like we have a little bit of a reaction right there yeah actually cranial superficial pectorals and move on down to the cranial deep <laughs> pectorals pretty good there not feeling too much we're gonna be down to that brachialis get overlooked to you. You've got all of your extensor tendons and ligaments and flexors and stress point back here on the pectorals back here it's ascending or descending pectorals I'm gonna check the spots there's three big Typical pressure points up here along the withers, along in the rhomboids, traps, and then down into the spinalis dorsi right here. Not much of a reaction. I'm going to palpate down his thoracics. Ah, a little bit of a reaction there. Start to see some stiffness once you drop off to the back of the thoracics, kind of typically what we would call a hunter bump. Starting to form there and there's definitely some joint or stiffness back there, a little bit of dysfunction. Now I'm just going to go along his longissimus dorsi. We're getting to the good stuff, buddy. We have to do all the palpation stuff first, then we can get to the good stuff. <laughs> and then we're going to go 
crossus legitimus costarum. More on this ventral serratus. More on the dorsal serrate. I'm just kind of sweeping over this intercostal region, over these ribs, over our rib heads. We definitely have very hypertonic muscling right here underneath um, the abdominal muscles here. here and check his sacral iliac in these <laughs> gluteal medials and superficial gluteals. Definitely when the chiropractor comes in, I think this is going to be an area that they're really going to want to work on. I think that we have some tree stiffness and tightness up through this um, sacroiliac region and this joint area. We kind of work down to the quadriceps a little bit. Our biceps femoris. A little bit of a reaction right there. I'm not feeling on the last couple of horses I've done, I can really feel the, the stress points. And on him, I'm not so much feeling the marble like stress point that I typically feel. It's more of a hypertonicity of muscling. So where I'm used to feeling something maybe the edge of like my thumbnail, I'm feeling something more like that in these regions. Before I drop down into that lower leg, I'm gonna go ahead and work um, and palpate the semitendinosus. And I know that that semimembranosus runs underneath it, next to it and underneath it, but it's much wider. Um, and actually, I can feel the separation on him. I look at that gemellus. I don't feel too much there. And then we're going to drop on down to the gastrocnemius back here and the Achilles. I'm trying to learn to watch faces and feel without looking, you know. Work on the extensor and flexors of the lower legs. I'm not sitting or anything. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and swap sides. Oh, you're shedding, buddy. already checked our cervicals but I'm just going to go ahead and do that neutral ligament one more time just keep myself on track over these traps and rhomboids a little bit of a reaction just right there that actually I do feel a little bit of a pressure point on back. Ah, uh, yes. Mm. 
think this is going to be an upper body workout primarily with the exception of that back end a little bit. So we have some scarring right here and I cannot see it, but I can feel the scar tissue build up here. Do you want to feel that? So that's something I'm really interested in gua sha. So I think that's something I'd like to come back. I'm ordering some tools. So I would like to come back and do a little gua sha on that as well. And then I'll be doing some cross fiber friction on it too when I come back through once I get to the massaging portion of this. Right here, get back down the longissimus dorsi. We'll just move this down. Check our ribs. He's a really easy one to fill your ribs on, actually. It's just surprising because he's not underweight at all. I want you to feel on the other side, reach underneath here and feel where my hand is. That's interesting. Now feel on this side over here. Can you reach that far over? I've never noticed that before. So what has happened is he has, and you can kind of look at him and, and tell him that this is a scenario potentially, but it's like he has overdeveloped and in his abdominal his abdominal area through here so if you could feel it it's exceptionally um hypertonic so i would say if you follow my hand down and you hit that i would say it's probably an inch an inch and a quarter taller than it should be here I don't know if you can see we have a hunter's bump and then a lower space of hypotonicity and then we come back up and we're not very mobile there I'm kind of looking back here around this calcaneus I'm just feeling to the inside of his tail. It's good. And I'm actually going to feel underneath his tail as well. He has a true stress point, right? He, like you can feel it's just like a marble underneath here. We don't think about all these muscles that raise and lift and turn and twitch, but they're there. Okay, so I'm going to use that as my conclusion for my palpation, and we're going to go ahead and flip him back around, and I'm actually going to start my Swedish massage with my epilrage strokes just to warm his body up with him maybe 7 to 10 minutes, and then I'm going to go back over him um, with some petrissage, and I can tell you the majority of my work is going to be on his front end, on his head, in the TMJ region through his cervicals, through here on the rhomboid, the splenius, complexus, um, brachiocephalicus, sternocephalicus, all the good muscles there. That's where I'm gonna work primarily. I am gonna come back down here and work underneath here some, and then I'm gonna spend some time up here, and I'm probably gonna see how deep he'll let me go um, with some compressions on that. So, 
All right, we'll go ahead and start with the Swedish. So let me just step them back just a little bit so I can get here. Because, like I said, I am concerned with, with our equine friends' faces and the amount of attention that they get if the horse will allow me to. You. And my, my plan is to just start here, actually, with them and to just do some very sweeping epleroid strokes. And I understand not every horse may agree with that, but Hollywood agrees with it. <laughs> So with our Swedish, it's just very sweeping. It's to warm the muscles up, <laughs> to increase circulation, and it looks like to de-shed today. I like to kind of do it with my hands open, like the girl in the demonstration video. Let's sweep up. This does increase the blood flow, and it does increase lymphatic draining. We're getting lots of yawning and licking. I don't know if you can see it, but he's a fan. And of course, we're going to sweep up towards the heart. I think the tail's overlooked sometimes, too. Back up the legs. Are <laughs> you like it, buddy? We haven't even got to the good stuff, really. We should have chosen a tan one. Ooh, big yawns. Big yawns. Yeah, it's good releases. going to the shed for a second and then we're going to move into our petrosage. I think I'm making it worse. <laughs> you just started it up. <laughs> so I'm going to start to work on his head because I think that's where several of our issues lie. And we also know that if you have an issue here, a lot of times you do have an issue here. So maybe we have some interconnection. Yes, yawn. That makes me feel good if nothing else, Hollywood. So I'm gonna start and I'm just going to, oh, I know. I'm just going to use some light. I'm talking very, very light impressions with my thumb. I'm kind of cupping underneath his chin and massaging at the same time. Mm. You know, on that reaction, I'm going to swap from the bat and I'm going to go to just a steady pressure. Back 
existed. Just kind of steady pressure, and now I'm just doing some very light, very light cross friction on that masseter muscle. I'm going to move on up to the. I'm going to move on up to the temporal mandibular joint. step to the other side while I'm here and, and do this other side as well. pressure because he's not can't that too much. I would actually like to work on him again in a couple of days, maybe maybe Monday. So I'm gonna go up here. Remember we had a difference in our wings of Atlas. So this one is right here and this one over here is up here. So I'm just going to do a little bit of some C strokes there. And then I'm just going to hold pressure. Tight there. It's really tight. And then we started to see a little bit of hypertonicity here and then he, and here on him. So I'm gonna go ahead and work down to that. And for right now, starting out, I'm just gonna hold a little pressure and see what we get. I don't know if you can see his reactions I'm getting. Wow. But I just feel like it's pretty inflamed, and so I don't want to aggravate it for the sake of a homework assignment. So I may not be doing great movements. So the fascia here is really tight compared to other parts of his body, and I'm sure it is because of the protrusion. Just like anything, it's like your waistline and belts. They get tighter the more your waist protrudes. I'm actually going to try a little bit of friction. His eyes are softening, actually. And then we come down here. And again, I'm going to start out with just some compression. I'm really not doing anything amazing or dramatic, but I think it's what's necessary for right now. This actually seems to be feeling a little bit better just with the pressure. He's still obviously sore, there's some reaction there. So I'm gonna try the same thing here. I think this horse can really benefit. I mean, I'm going to take the cranial sacral course next, and I think this horse is a prime candidate for cranial sacral work. I'm not going to use any tapopins. I'm not going to use any hacking or cupping or clapping on his neck because I don't think that it will feel the way he needs it to feel right now. And I know not everything can be a feel good rub down. I understand that, but. 
I would like to have a few more sessions like this before I get into anything heavier. Just gonna do some kneading. Kind of be careful right through here. I'm just going to use some circular movements along the supraspinatus. There's my scapular ridge and then come over to this infraspinatus, infraspinatus and do some more circulars. Oh, I've got some lip twitching, nose twitching. Underneath here. It's almost a picking up motion that I'm using underneath these pectorals. This is where he has that really hypertonistic bulge. I mean, I know some horses had a slight hypertonicity there, but this is about normal. I'm going to come up to the rhomboids. Oh, easy, buddy. This legitimus, the legitimus dorsi, the sterum felt good earlier. He just had some blockage here and here. But I am going to go ahead and use some clapping and some cupping back here. I'm not going to do any hacking on him just because of the dysfunction through here. I want to be a little, care a little careful. I don't want to hurt anything through here at the moment. So. in those glutes. Effleurage through. Sweep that out. Keep that circulation going. Get that lymphatic system working. And then I'm also going to do some, I think you'll benefit from some cupping through here too. Look that right there. So I'm going to massage his symbionic tendinosis and semi-membranous as well. I take the tendinosis and kind of pull it in towards me. Now I'm going to find if there's a ridge there where that membrane the membranus is, and I'm going to massage it actually back in towards his tail. And then work out 
how my gastro eating is. And that it killing me. Because I know him. He's dropping a little bit. That's actually good. Picking up. killer muscle. So this was the side that was more forward. I had to refill. And he I'm just holding some light pressure on it maybe three or four pounds. I'm trying to learn how much that is with my scale at home. learning that trying to put enough pressure to be effective and not hurt them and them shake you off essentially is a fine line. It's actually starting to soften up a little bit even though this is a vertebra, so I don't know how much I can soften, but the fascia is looser. It's becoming looser. And again, I think that this is another area that he could really benefit from some washout. Right there is our issue from the other side. Showing up on this side as well. I'm just gonna hold pressure. Sharp has some lip twitching. I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not. me work on this side a little bit deeper than the other. Need to be putting more effleurage strokes in there.
just really wasn't a lot of pressure points, or I'm sorry, stress points, when you try to intersperse martial arts with massage therapy. <laughs> I'm just going to do a little work along his latissimus dorsi and this latissimus dorsi. And we're going to go over the gluteal medius and the superficial gluteus and the deep gluteus. I'm going to do, you and probably can't see it in the camera, but essentially some picking ups underneath this abdominal area and these deep pectorals right here. Here. I'm going to go back to the other side because I feel like I'm lopsided if I don't. But I'm going to do a little bit of some. You really seem to like that back here, and I got some really good releases. You can see that's tighter there. The movement is different than, say, here. See if I can loosen this fascia up right here. Move back to his tail actually now. I'm actually going to because I know this horse. I'm not pulling against him, I'm just holding, but he's actually pulling. gonna finish with some effleurage and some lap stretching.
side of his neck actually feels quite a bit better than it did earlier. It just feels looser, softer. Did I really change the vertebra much? Not a lot, but it does feel slightly smaller and it just feels softer and nicer. one more time through the neck. So, kind of my advice to Melissa, who's a very, oh wow, look at the difference. What? We'll get back to my advice to Melissa. I'm kind of happy about these results. <laughs> like, you stand still. Why do I feel like if I had a cookie, you would be more willing to do this? I can get you a cookie. Oh, that's much better. Look at this. Good boy. Yeah. I'm not pulling. I'm just yeah, I'm letting him kind of come around on his own. There was still more noticeably more restriction on that side, but it was better than when we started. I think and this side was tremendously better. So my thoughts um, to Melissa is just, I would like to see him in a week. And um, now that we're finished, I would give him five, six minutes of just hand walking. And if I could come back and work on him in a week, that would be great. I would recommend, because I think we have bigger issues than I can fix up here and in the hips. And I'm a firm believer in a whole team approach. So definitely call Dr. Enos, have him come check him out, and then Copeland or Cato, whoever you want to use, our vets, and, and maybe have them take a look at him as well. And then, did you have his teeth done when we had our whole group? We did. Mm -hmm. Okay, so his teeth have been done recently. Within so the last three to four months. Yeah, so just keep an eye on that front. It's got an odd hook on the, on the front, which is not something I'm real familiar with seeing, so I'll show it to you after we turn the camera off. Good boy. If you'll hold him, I'm gonna do his back legs real quick. Good boy, Hollywood, you're such a good man. Again, my recommendations is a chiropractor to check out our TMJ and our cervicals and then also to pay some attention back here to this iliosacral area and then to call in our barbarians as well and have them take a look. I don't know that they're going to find much on an actual lameness exam, but I think just a good overall body workup would be great and I hope that that was what you needed and was semi-amusing because we were really rolling with what we had today. Have a great day and thank you.